Good morning, Stampers. Okay, today our first card for this month's club, I'm going to call um, Perfect Day, cause, because it's using the stamp that says, A day is perfect as you are, which is very appropriate for a close friend's birthday. Um, it's not that difficult a card, but some of you may have never watercolored on colored paper. So that's kind of what I'm going to show you today is how to do this part. Plus, this card is what I consider a paper saver, which means you can use the inside of your coral piece, which is right here. If you wanted to stamp your flower in the center of it and punch it out, then you wouldn't have wasted another piece of paper to cut your flower out, which is what we're going to do for class. And it'll save that much paper from having to be cut from another piece. Your card front is, or your card base is going to be Lucky Limeade, and it's just folded with a landscape fold. The coral piece is four by five and a quarter. We're going to stamp our flower and cut it out. There's my flower already stamped and cut out of my piece. And then instead of using Limeade to do the flower and the leaves, I used Pear Pizzazz because it's a little bit lighter and that way when we watercolor on it it'll have some light touches in it where if you did limeade on limeade it's kind of a little bit too yellow and I didn't want it to have too much yellow in it. So there are my two pieces and they're stamped with stays on jet black. The yellow flower is stamped just yellow on yellow which we'll do that when we get to that point um, and it's using so saffron. Now we have the uh, framelits that we used, which is the, <coughs> let me read the name off of it, Window Frames Collection, and we used the, not the smallest, but the next to the smallest to do our little piece here. The other framelit set we used is the one that comes with the Secret Garden stamp set, which is what the flowers are stamped with. It's called Secret Garden, and the framelits that go with it are called Secret Garden. The doily is punched out of um, the new sizzlets that is the three doilies um, on one sizzlet, and it's called the Large Delicate Doily Sizzlet, and we used the largest one on there, and that was with Designer Series Paper. The Designer Series Paper is T for two, and uh, we're just using a small strip. It's three inches by five and an eighth, or our other paper saving technique is the vanilla piece. And what we're gonna do, I'll just lay the card over here to the side, is we're gonna stamp our sentiment right in the very middle of this very vanilla piece with black stays on. Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna go over to our Big Shot and we're going to use our framelits die cut and we're going to cut out this sentiment right out of the middle. Okay, through the magic of video we have done that and there is our cut out piece and our rem our remnant and our remnant is going to be actually our backing because you're not going to see this hole it's going to be covered up with designer paper. So we're going to take our designer paper and it is um, going to cover up perfectly across the middle and hide that. So I'll go ahead and just put that part on so I'll have that much done. Then I'll show you how to watercolor the flowers. <clears throat> I'm just going to put a little tape there and here. That's going to, where it's going to cover up. Use my tile. I use a piece of tile on the table when I'm stamping on a plastic table because it makes for a more um, crisp image. You can lay this on your grid paper or your uh, work surface and line up to make sure you're getting your paper right across the middle because we don't want any of our hole to show of course. Well, I can't seem to hold it smooth with my fingers. Okay, that looks good to me. Nope, not quite right. Do it over. Okay, let's try that one more time. So you want to go right over the middle of that paper. And you see how I just held it so that it, the six inch I guess it's six inches, it's longer than this piece of paper. Then you can just take your scissors and go ahead and trim that off. Or you can use your paper trimmer if you're not sure of being able to cut a straight line, which I have a hard time doing sometimes, but usually it's just faster for me to use my scissors than to get sticky on my paper trimmer. 
Okay, so now our hole is covered up. You never know it's there. I put a little score pile tape on this piece since it's going to be mounted down um, to make sure that stays nice and tight against the center of the card. I also don't put any sticky over uh, where I'm going to punch these holes. And what you want to do is take your um, Essentials paper piercing pack and I'm just going to punch as if I were doing a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine. So I'll I'm going to use it and I'm going to use these two two rows of holes and you're just going to do every, of course, just go down and up and down and up and down and up or skip every other hole and come back and do the other row. But I'm just doing it just like it were a zigzag stitch. So you go in this hole then skip over one, that hole, skip over one, that hole. Here I'm using the fine tip so I can get in those really small places and we're going to use Lucky Limeade, Daffodil, Coral, and just a hint, of, I mean, and some Tangerine Tango. So what you want to do is you're going to take your Limeade pen, which is this one. I actually add a little old olive too, so it make it a little bit darker. But I'm going to put that like that. I'm going to lay my acrylic block on here so you can see how I do the ink part. I don't see any point in getting out the wrinkles when you don't need a whole lot of ink. So that's the Limeade. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is, of course, you always need... Um, a paper towel handy to make sure that your painter doesn't have too much water in it. This is a new painter. It has never even been used before, I don't think. So get some water down the tip. Dab it on your paper towel. Pick up this ink. And we're just going to lay it down where the darkest part... See, so i got a little bit too much water, so take that water out. Get some of that water out of the pen. There we go. And you're just going to lay it down where the darkest part would be, which is where one leaf lays on top of another. The underneath part, that's where it's going to be the darkest. Do about two leaves at a time. Once you get some color put down there, just pull it out with the brush so that it's not all dark in one spot. I'm just going to do just like that, just like we watercolor normally. But this time we don't have to worry about coloring in the whole flower at one time because we're the flowers basically already colored in for us. Then we're going to do the same thing with the Calypso Coral piece, but we're going to use um, Tangerine as our shading color because um, reds on reds don't do uh, pretty as good as um, greens or blues or yellows. So Calypso has a lot of red in it because it's orange. And then the Tangerine is just a darker orange which has a little bit more red in it. So we're just, I'm using the, instead of putting coral on coral, which is what I do a lot, I'm going to use the tangerine because it makes it a little bit darker or more definite. So on this flower, just going to do the same thing. And what I did was just do all this center part first. And you go, well, that looks funny because I got, but it's just because the paper's wet. And you know how cardstock does when it's wet, it's just darker in that spot. So remember that when it dries, uh, what was just wet with no ink in it, it's just going to blend right in because it's it was just wet. Okay, I'm going to do it like that. These little pieces that come down in the center of this flower, I think they should be dark, so I'm just going to color them in dark. Um, unlike watercolor paper and doing it on a white surface, um, of course, doing color on color is a little more forgiving because you don't have to worry about outside the lines because you can just kind of do it with your water like that and it'll just blend right in. Okay, you want to just have some little definition on those. Um, I guess it's where the leaves are supposed to be folded over or folded back. I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to look like. I'm not sure what kind of flower that's really supposed to be. Pick up a little more color there. I'm going to do the center. They don't have to be perfect, of course, because flowers are not perfect. Just want some definite color change in there. Again, as that dries, you can see that it has some a little bit of definition on my flower um, I saw this um, a similar card to this uh, they showed it at one of the regional 
events, and she used uh, embossing, clear embossing powder on the regular cardstock, but I just didn't like the way that looked. It just didn't go with the rest of the card. Nothing on the card was shiny, and so it didn't really go with it properly. So we stamped that. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of this orange, muted, and it's going to be cut out with the dye. So we'll put that over there to dry, and then we'll cut that out. So now we're ready to assemble the card, and what I have is my card front base. I have my Calypso Coral, and I have my centerpiece mounting. I'm just using the skinny score pal tape, um, the eighth inch. It doesn't need much. It's not a real heavy card. Okay, and there's no embossing on it. So I usually use the heavier when there's embossing. I did put three little pieces of score pal tape right here in the center where my hole is. Because you got a lot of stuff mounted to the center of this card. You want to make sure it's stuck down. And then this is just going to be centered on that piece. And that looks good to me. Okay. All right, so there we have our piece put together. Now we're ready to do this faux stitching. So I'm going to take my Lucky Limeade pen, and I'm going to use the, the tip, not the brush tip. I'm going to use the little pointy writing tip. And you're just going to go from hole to hole to hole like this. It's hard doing this backwards. There you go. So it kind of gives it a little bit of faux look. All right, now, so we want to take our piece that we um, cut out of our center, our saved piece that we had stamped and cut out, and I'm just going to just barely touch around the edges with just a little bit of crumb cake, and that's just because, you know, very vanilla can look a little harsh. So I'm going to try to go around the edges just a little bit like that, not too much. I'm not an overdoer when it comes to distressing because it's such a pretty, the colors are pretty, I hate to mess them up. Now, um... This is a two inch square, and if you cut a two inch square, this piece should mount on it perfectly, giving you that little matted look around those corners if it, as if it were stamped on a square. So we'll just stick those two pieces together, and I'm just using snail for that. It doesn't, it's not a weight bearing piece, so it just, snail will be fine. And mount that. Okay. Now we have our doily that's cut out of the T for Two designer paper, and I've already taken a dauber and sponged around the edges with Calypso Coral, just because, so that, because the back of the paper is light, and when you cut it, then your edges look too white, so I just do that to kind of make it look like as if it were the same color on both sides. Now that's going to get mounted to this piece, and once again, it's not a weight bearing, so, you know, some snail is good enough. And we want to take that and just mount that right in the center. Okay. Now, normally, you know, you'd pop things up, but since the flowers are going to be up on pop dots, I thought it best that this just be mounted in the center with tape. Okay, now, I want to take my flowers, <clears throat> and they're just going to be on pop dots. I have my leaves, which were... I punched using the same framelit set, Secret Garden, did the leaves out of pear pizzazz. I took a dauber with some um, limeade, and I just kind of sponged the edges just to give it a little bit of definition. It doesn't have to be really definite. because I mean, you could have stamped the leaves with the ink if you wanted to and really be uh, go all out. But since this is for a class and um, we don't want it to take forever to finish, I then added um, some of the smallest pearls in the... Set pearls of central pack with one large one there to kind of give it a little different, and then I use the medallions, I believe they're called dahlias, um, that you stick on with a glue dot. All three flowers are on dimensionals, and then I added two of the largest pearls out of the essential pack, and that is pretty.